So, uh, color wise for the sky, I'm going to use some. I've got a, like a thalo or a like a lazio, uh, um, like a um, turquoise ish blue uh, here, which is quite a strong blue. Hopefully, that will show up in the palette. And I'm going to put a bit of um, cerulean in there because you've got to have a bit of cerulean just to sort of cool it, um, stop it being quite as aggressive. Because I want this sort of a crispish sky. I don't want it to be too, too bluey warm. I want it to have a cool effect. Okay, so there we go. So there's a bit of color, cerulean and the sort of thalo or azure blue, whatever you've got. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my big mop brush with clean water and I'm gonna run that across this top section of the painting. So across the mountain and all the way to the other side. So a nice big, large band of water. So as our blues kind of come down into this area, they're gonna just soften. That's really what we want. So I'm leaving the top section of the painting dry. So this top area is dry and it's just the bottom that I'm wetting to allow for a soft, a very soft edge. So taking my color, I uh, probably should have done this with a bigger brush, but never mind. Make sure your board is slightly tilted. So you want about a 10, 15 degrees tilt so that the paint can come down. And then you want to start to drop this color in. So I'm doing it reasonably strong because obviously as it dries, it's going to lighten. There we go, coming down to that nice wet band. And I'm going to give it a slight angle to the sky as well. I don't want it totally straight. I'm going to take a bit of water now and start to introduce a touch of water into that just to get it to move a bit quicker. <clears throat> Let's wash that out, don't need that. And then I'm going to continue it down into the mountain. So don't stop at the mountain. Keep the painting, uh, keep the paint coming down all the way through. And then I'm just going to wash that out. Oops, where did that come from? Oh, that's where I've dragged the paint across. Okay, so I'm going to get my spray bottle now and just spray this all out all the way to the bottom of the painting so that it totally disappears. So anything you don't want, you can just wash it off. There we go. Keep it really soft. So I'm just going to mop that up. And obviously down in this grassy area, you don't need to worry too much about a few edges because we're going to have a bit of texture down there anyway that will cover that up or will enhance it. Okay, so that's fine. Now, I don't want that to creep too quickly down. So I want to keep a light band just behind, just behind my mountain so that I've got a bit of light at the lower part of the sky. Now, what I don't want to do is get in there and start just pulling colour out because I'm going to edge everything up. So what I'm going to, I'm first of all, just going to dry that off very quickly. So now, using the same blue, so not really changing the colour or the mix, I'm just going to put a bit more water in it because I don't want it to be uh, too strong too soon. So just a nice dilute version of the sky colour will be the start of my mountain. Taking a damp brush with a little bit of moisture in it, so it's got a bit of water. I'm then going to re-wet this lower section of the mountain. Oops, that's got green in it. That's not ideal. So coming all the way through, just with some water. Just let that run away. So we just spray that out a bit. Okay, now the top section, I take my color and I bring it down to that moisture. 
So this is the shape of my mountain, obviously where I've drawn it. And I let that color come all the way down to where that moisture is that I've just put on. And I'm just gonna do this as a flat wash first of all, and then we'll introduce a little bit of variation into it on the second wash to make it a bit more interesting. So keep it really simple at this stage. So all the way through that distance, all the way to the right, for those really far away mountains, and just let it bleed out at the bottom into that moisture that we put on earlier. Okay. I'm just going to mop up some of these larger blobs of water. Now, when you look at the reference and you look at the, um, the painting, the actual mountains are slightly darker than the, the, well, probably about the same tone as the darker part of the sky when I'm squinting at it. So this at the moment is lighter than that. And obviously when this dries, it's still gonna be lighter than that. So I'll have to go back across in a moment once it's fully dried and give it a bit more tone. So I'm just gonna wash, uh, just gonna dry this off. Okay, so again, using the same, so I'm just gonna double up the wash now. So it's the same color, a bit more water. So this is how I'm gonna create some very soft, subtle tonal changes in those distant mountains by using us just doubling up the washes. So, and then I'm gonna wash out the bottom. So on this side, it needs to come a bit darker. I can put a tiny little bit of French ultramarine, Ooh, that's far too much, of French ultramarine in there as well, just to warm the blue up a bit, give it a little bit of variation. So coming through this left. Um, Stuart, is that on wet or on dry? Dry. So or I just dry. dried it off with a hairdryer. Um, yeah, of course you did, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just um, going to take a damp brush now and to keep this bottom edge soft to give the impression that maybe we've got some mist or some uh, atmospheric things going on. I'm just going to wash away the bottom edge of that, this colour that I'm putting on. Just a few dots here and there. And then it kind of comes across. Maybe leave a little bit of the under colour showing in places just for some variation and again just softly tickle that away all the way through just to keep it nice and uh, soft at the bottom of the mountain because generally that's where the mist and so on collects a little bit stronger at the top and then we come through this band and then we're into this hill over here again just run that edge away keeping it soft okay and then again i need to dry that so it's a little bit of a building process this before we can get into the foreground so I'm going to dry it off again now that we've just put down and come a little bit stronger still. So a bit more pigment into that wash. 
not too much, just a little bit more, because we don't want it to show up too strong, but we want it to be um, in front of the lighter section that we've just obviously put on. So just bringing that blue through. And you want to keep this fairly blue as well, because in these crisp clear sort of mountain airs, the sky has not got a lot of pollution in it. So um, we don't get too much variation in the uh, in the blues. I mean, you could you could argue it's slightly purplish, but for the purpose of this painting, I'm just going to keep it simple. Just leave it blue. Um, coming across, and then it kind of comes up and then behind that tree. And then that's another mountain range there. So then I'll just wash that bottom out again. Just keep this soft in there. Fortunately, the um, this wasn't very dry when I did this. I'm just going to lift that out. It's got a little bit of moisture still in it and causing the cauliflower. So I'm just going to correct that, just with a damp brush, just to take a bit of that moisture out of that back hill. <clears throat> okay, that should do that. And then we'll just let that stop there, because that's going to be another mountain range in front of. So that's going to be this range that kind of goes behind the tree and then in front of this, this one. So progressively, you want it to be getting slightly darker as it's coming forward. Not too darker. Too darker, that doesn't even make sense, but not too much darker, but obviously you need to be able to see it. So try this, and then we do the same, we just repeat the process. Mm. So if it's not, not tonally strong enough, then you can always add a little bit more color and then dry it off again. So I'm now gonna go to the next one in front of this. So a little bit more color this time. So then, let's repeat that same process and get the next bit of the mountain in. As I said, slightly, slightly darker now because we're trying to say that this is a bit closer to us. So I'll make sure that is dry. So then this layer of the mountain range is going to come a bit stronger. A bit more ultramarine in that, it's a bit too, too greeny. A little bit more ultramarine. There we go, so it kind of comes down into the valley. So this is where we're going to have trees and all of that good stuff. And kind of come up. And it's going to get lost behind, I'm just going to break that edge up, behind this, this tree. We find it again over here. <coughs> And it continues up and then away into the distance. Let's get a bit more colour. Now I'm going to break that bottom edge up in a second because we want to keep that fairly organic. So let's just do that now. So taking a bit of water, just going to drop it along that edge keeping the board tilted towards me, just to keep it soft. And so we don't have too hard an edge at that point. Might get a bit of cauliflowering back into this wash, but that's fine. We'll just add an interesting edge to the, uh, to the wash. Okay, now this section through here is actually going to be pretty dark, so I'm going to dry this off again.
So, so now we can get into this first layer, which actually links up with this big hill uh, coming through this left-hand side. So this is kind of all one passage of, almost all one passage of color. So I think for this particular area, I'm actually gonna wet it first and drop some colors in so that shape. Because it's a larger area, uh, it'd be a little bit easier to control it if we've got some moisture on the paper. Um, and it'll allow us to just drop the colors in and get them to move without getting too hard edges everywhere. So I'm just gonna drop this water in first. Trying to keep it roughly to the shape uh, that I want it. Probably could do this with a bigger brush. A bit quicker. So it kind of comes all the way down. And even I'll go over the top of that tree line, which is going to be at the top of the greeny grass area. Kind of comes up and then into the valley and along into that tree around the back of these trees and then away into the distance on this right hand side. Okay. So now we've got some moisture on there, color wise. So I'm actually going to start with a light color first. I'm going to go with some transparent yellow and some cerulean to give me a cool, coolish, um, pastely green. I don't want it to be too yellow, yellow. So a bit more cerulean in there. So I'll start to drop some of this in first. I'm going to go right to the top, so I'm actually going to blue that edge out a little bit at the top. Drop some of this colour in. <clears throat> Coming down, and I know it should be darker than this, but this is like the under colour, and then we'll bring some other colours over the top of this. So all the way through with that nice green. Let it come down into the foreground area. Then I'm going to dip into a bit of stronger cerulean now. So some stronger cerulean blue and then run that along this top edge of this hill line. And even perhaps give the, the idea that's perhaps a few trees or shapes breaking the skyline. So just tapping the brush so that the point of the brush can create a little bit of a shape at the top of the wash. I may even go to a slightly pointier brush to do that. A bit more blue, more cerulean and just carve out so obviously the top of the the top of the wash is dry so these little marks that are pushing out into the dry area will stay and obviously the bottom of the wash will will just evaporate into the colors that are around it so i'm just pulling up some little spiky shapes that can perhaps indicate some distant forest. Okay, now I need to pay attention to this bottom edge, not get too fiddly. So I'm just gonna spray this out. I don't have a hard line along that edge. My mop brush should just wash that away. So it's all nice and soft. Let that disappear. 
like so. So I can go back to fiddling now. Uh, so I'm actually going to drop in some ultramarine into that same cerulean -y color. So it's a bit more blue blue and bring some of that into this wet area. Again, just sort of tapping, just tapping the brush into the wet wash with some thicker color. And that's the key, really make sure it's thicker color, not don't use more washy color because it will just cauliflower everywhere. So coming all the way through, kind of bring it down a bit further. So I want a few nice darks around this larger grass shape that's going to be poking poking its head through eventually. Now I'm just going to take a bit of um, alizarin or even a bit of purple just into those blues to give it a, a, pur a slightly purplier feel. Because I'm coming closer to my center of interest, I want to just increase the increase the contrast a little bit to um, pull the eye into this area rather than out at the edge of the painting. So we'll see the edge of the painting. Don't want too much contrast there. Otherwise the eye will just shoot out and won't come back, which is not ideal. So a bit more blue. Perhaps might go slightly more burnt sienna in it. So ultramarine and burnt sienna. Still fairly, fairly strong, just to get some nice, stronger, darker trees coming down the valley. So it kind of comes down into this lower section. So bringing this dark through, just poke up a few more of those pine tree type shapes, which also help to push this area back if you can get some of those poking up. Um, just to break up the shape. Uh, all the way across, a bit more ultramarine. So then this is going to be a bit more of a bush on that side. Again, fairly dark bush. I'm going to put a bit of um, a bit of a yellow into that, just to green it slightly. Again, just to vary the color. So I've got a bit more color variation. It's starting to dry a little bit on this side of the painting, so I need to get my get a move on. Uh, just a few more, and then it disappears out of the picture up there. And then I can bring this down a little bit lower in this wet wash. So a bit more of that green on this side. A bit stronger, so more more yellow. So the ultramarine and um, the transparent yellow together to make it slightly stronger. Bring some darker trees on this side. So we're kind of coming down towards the foreground now. More paint again, more yellow. So I'm using it fairly, fairly strong now, purely because we're at sort of coming quite close to us in this sort of valley. And I want the colours to be a bit more intense. So I'm going to leave some of this nice yellow just poking its head through. So 
Maybe take a few more darks up there, a bit more yellow. And yellow in there, it's a bit too blue. So I'm going to darken up the tree line here a bit. Coming all the way across, a bit darker in there. And then we've got this sort of gap in the trees there, which sort of comes down and then meets up with the um, this foreground area. I'll put a few lonely trees in those gaps. And then coming all the way down, a bit more brown into that, just to vary it. Perhaps that's a bit too brown, a bit more blue. So that it's pretty, pretty dark down in this left hand corner. some space to get those trees in. A few more gaps within the, uh, the hill line. And uh, that then should do, should do that. Okay, so I'll wash that brush out. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a dry and I'll let you guys uh, just catch up on that while I dry it off. Um, so really what we're talking about now is everything that's down in this lower section. So all the grasses, the, the, um, the, the flowers and all of that stuff that's going on down in the foreground. So again, we're gonna, gonna do it in a, in a layered fashion. Um, so you wanna try and make sure that the layer, you're happy with that particular layer before you move to the next layer because it's very hard to go back and alter something once you've gone past that layer, uh, purely because we're trying to get all this nice random stuff. And if you go back and start fiddling with some of these areas that you're not happy with, the other side of that um, uh, broken up area, then you can actually wreck the area and make it less fresh. So the first thing we're gonna do is look to try and get this field of green grass that's sort of um, working its way uh, down into the valley then we're going to have a slightly darker of green <laughs> to break up this sort of uh, oakery grasses that are going to come in from this right hand side towards the left. Into that I'm going to drop a little bit of salt and then we'll let that dry okay before we get into doing all of these nice big grasses. Okay so that's the plan. So to do that I'm going to take um, some water, lay the board reasonably flat, now, what I've got to be careful of here is I don't want to lose my nice, soft, wet and wet edge that I've created from that initial wash. So I'm actually going to be wetting the paper just inside that edge, all right? Not going right up to it. So I'm just bringing the water, the moisture, below that wet and wet edge because I don't want to have to repaint that if I can help it. Um, all the way across to this right hand side. It's gonna make it a little bit larger. And this is what I'm gonna be dropping my greens into for the grasses, so all the way through there. So now I'm gonna mix up some transparent yellow. If you don't have transparent yellow, you could just use like lemon yellow or cadmium light. Something like that would be good. I'm gonna put some of that phthalo-y type azure blue in it. I want it fairly green green to suggest that it's a very lush uh, meadow. And remember to make the colour a bit stronger. Well, can you just repeat those two colours again? The transparent yellow and the phthalo or the azure blue, whatever you've got there. Okay, so it's a fairly strong green. Might even put a tiny bit of cerulean in there as well. I think that's going to actually I need to get some out of the tube. That's too dirty. 
cerulean. That's cerulean. Let's put a bit of cerulean, clean cerulean out. So I'm going to put a bit of cerulean blue in there as well, because that will lighten it without and add a bit more blueness to it without making it darker. There we go. OK, so it's a fairly, fairly strong mix because obviously this is wet. I'm going to do this in a reasonably quick fashion because I don't want it to dry out too much. Keeping the shape of the, um, the field and it sort of narrows up there. I'm going to lose it a little bit. I'm going to take it right the way through. And just let it sort of grow into that wet area that you've put on. Bring it a little bit lower this side. Need to expand the, the wet area a bit. Just a bit of moisture, just on that bottom edge, just to tickle it away. Let it creep down into the grasses that are going to come next. There we go. Okay. So now, into here now where it's wet still, just wash that out a bit more. I'm gonna come with some slightly darker um, colors. Just lose all of this. There we go. Okay. I'll just block that off just gently. Oops. Just drop the tissue. Right, so into underneath that um, area, I want a darker band, and then I'm going to have a lighter band of colour. So the darker band of colour is going to be the um, similar to the colours that I've used in the, the trees in the distant mountains. So that's the cerulean blues, the, um, the French ultramarine, and possibly even a tiny bit of brown in it as well, just to warm it up. So it's got a bit of more of a um, bit of brownness to it. So then this is going to start off with seeing how wet the paper is. It's pretty wet, so I might need to just give that a moment before I drop this in. I may even thicken it up a little bit more. A bit more brown, a bit more blue. Drop to a slightly smaller brush as well. Just by using a smaller brush, obviously by putting less paint on and making it thicker, it won't spread so quickly because obviously this is pretty wet and I don't want to obliterate all of that that I've got. So let's do this now then. So just dropping some of these darker colors now below that green band and just let it spread. Not in too dissimilar fashion to what we did in the in the distant mountains, but making sure the board is not too steep because I don't want it to run too quickly towards me. I just want it to sort of play around and you know where it is. Um, so let's bring that up into the grasses a bit more there. Coming down towards this left hand part. I might just bring it down a little bit lower so it's not a straight straight line. A few more green bits over here and then just let it turn back up the hill. So we lose a little bit of that bright green which will help these grasses that are going to be poking up on top stand out and then 
I'm going to lose it a bit there and then just find it again over here. I don't want a continuous line all the way across. So I'm going to stop and then just bring a bit of that same colour in on this left hand side. And then just indicate that perhaps it goes up and maybe it meets, but we don't actually know. And that's enough. Okay, wash that brush out. So I now need a colour I can bring in here for these sort of wheaty brown grasses. And I may even make them a little bit more orange than they are in the reference because we've got a lot of blue in this painting. And I feel as though I need some counter colour to that blueness and a bit of warmth to suggest it is a, a warm day. So I'm going to mix up some um, burnt sienna. Now I can't put that on just neat because I think that would be a little bit too strong. So I'm going to put a bit of ochre into that, which will temper it. So this is just yellow ochre or raw sienna if you don't have yellow ochre, just to knock it down a little bit. And again, I want it reasonably reasonably strong and I'm not going to remember this is all wet down here so the colour is going to be fairly thick again I'm going to go to my my uh, narrower brush but a bit more of that raw sienna just because I've changed brushes I want it a bit thicker so coming in from this left hand side a bit more moisture in there. It's dried out a little bit, so I want it to be a little bit wetter. It's starting off to keep the board nice and flat. And I'm going to start to tickle these colours. And it is very wet, so they are going to spread. Well, that's why I want the board flat for this. Otherwise, they'll just run straight out of the picture. I want to try and keep a little bit of that lighter top edge. But equally, I want to break it up in places. <clears throat> Stuart, is that on wet? It is, yes, and it's pretty wet as well. That's why the colours are spreading very quickly. Okay. Okay. So, nice plume there of colour. Let that mix into that there. Perhaps a few even bring a few spots of this orange into the tree line just to link it together and then continuing to the left a bit more of this orange and then before before it dries it's going to take a little bit of salt Not too much, just a few sprinkles, just into some of those shapes, just to add a slight effect. I'm not fussed if it doesn't create too much of an effect. I just want to break it up a bit, add a bit of texture in that area, just to give me some variation. And obviously I'm trying to keep it to this particular area here rather than just let the salt go everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to continue those oranges but go slightly greener. I'm just going to take some, nick some of this green from the, that's on the palette here. Bring this now in from the, from the left. 
just to give me some um, counter colours on this left hand side for when I bring my colourful flowers. Is that wet or dry, please? It's moist. Moist, okay. Yeah. So just to help, and this is really just to help all of these grasses and stuff show up once I start to bring those on. May even suggest the odd flick. <clears throat> out of this area. And again, I'm not going to link the two totally together. Maybe just have a few fronds of grass that could link the areas. So it's not so literal. And it's still fairly wet, so these won't stay. They're going to probably evaporate into the moisture but it's just to give a another layer of texture within the painting okay so we'll tip it a little bit more actually towards me to get those grasses to just come down the painting it's starting to split a little bit there which is quite nice so I'm just going to give that a moment or two to do that it's work Wash out some of these blobs of colour. <clears throat> okay. Give that a minute or two. So now, this area through here, because obviously where I've put all this masking fluid on, if I don't put any colour there, it's not going to show up. So I now need to bring some darker, more intense greens. So I'm going to dip back into my azure blue or phthalo blue, if you have it. A little bit of orange in there as well, just to knock it down. Okay, I'm going to add some other colours to it in a moment. So we'll just start off with this. And it's all nice and wet still down here. And I may even add a little bit more moisture before I start this. It's all very wet in wet, this section. There we go. So again, it's pretty, pretty moist. Tilting the board flat again. And then I'm going to start. I don't know, let's go from this middle section and start to drop in these nice darker blues and start to build in a bit of foreground tone. Might even tip that away from me slightly. I'm going to drop into a bit of brown in there as well, into that same colour. Again, variation, thinking about just subtle colour changes within that larger area of tone. So coming out to this left hand side. Or burnt sienna in it. Just linking the two areas of colour together. So letting some of the existing colour poke its head through and just bring a little bit of the new colour over the top of it. A 
perhaps even suggest a few um, leaf type shapes or horizontalish type shapes. More brown. Okay, and I'm actually going to drop a bit of gum arabic into this in a moment. Just want to get a bit of colour on this right hand side. So cerulean, plenty of cerulean. I've just put a bit of neat cerulean on to start with. just to lose some of this area here. Even dip into a bit of transparent yellow into that cerulean. And remember, because the paint is all nice and, oh, sorry, the, the board is all nice and wet still, it should mix once I start to add the, the gum arabic. It's a bit more yellow in this left hand side, right hand side even. Get a bit of yellow on there, a bit more yellow. A few more yellow spots here and there. Okay, now get some uh, gum arabic and I'm going to use a pet. Just soak up a little bit of gum arabic into the pet. Stuart, then... if you haven't got um, gum arabic, just leave it alone. Yeah, don't. Yeah, you could use a little bit of water if you want to and get a few cauliflower bits happening. Um, perhaps that might be quite nice, but this anything to add a little bit of texture to this colour really, that's all you need. Um, and suggest sort of organic -y type forms. <clears throat> Just some spots of this here and there. Try not to put them all in the same place, try and vary the vary them. Okay, and that will probably probably do do that. So I can't really do too much more on that unless you're going to maybe a little bit of tipping. Maybe I'll leave it alone. Um, I need to let that dry off a little bit now before I can move on to do the next, the next thing. Lift a bit of that colour out there. A lot of water in there. Not just take some of the moisture off from the edge. I'll give it a little tip, can't resist. Get the colors mixing a bit more. May even let that just tip to that right hand side to suggest the grasses are growing that way. Okay, 
we'll give that a moment. <clears throat> and then I'll dry this off. I'm going to use a very narrow brush and this brush has got a lovely point on it. Um, and I'm actually going to run just some water. So this is just moisture into a little bit of these grasses that are sticking up. Just so I can get some color in there. And it's a bit more um, or less controlled, I should say. Don't want it to be too fiddly. Gonna let those colors just mingle up there. So I think I'm gonna make my grasses, I'm gonna make my grasses yellow. I don't fancy green grasses. So I'm gonna make them quite orangey yellowy color. Sort of a sandy color, I think. So I'm just going to drop some of this in up here to where I've just put that moisture. I'm not trying to paint any particular type of grass. It's just a bit of color really to this top section. And also this will help to link the um, this lower area where we've got all of these textural elements going on to this upper area. more cad yellow just to break up and a few more fronds into this area and really this is just a kind of disguise that we've had masking masking fluid on there and to bring it together. I'm just going to give that a little spray as well. A few more yellow bits just to link together these um, some of these areas. Gonna give it a little spray. Okay, now I'm gonna dip into some neat color now. The first one being, um, let's go with, uh, I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna try it. I don't know if it's gonna work. It normally works with oils, but whether it's gonna work with watercolor, but we'll give it a go. So I'm actually gonna take two tubes of color, one purple, one one white, and I'm going to put some tissue just so I can clean it in between. Otherwise, I'm going to make my my white tube incredibly dirty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the brush into the white, squeeze out a little bit of purple, and dip it into the purple at the same time. So I've got white and purple on the brush. And then I'm just going to, in places, have a little bit of that. Just to create some shapes. Oops, let's wipe that off. Let's do it the other way around this time. Let's go purple and then white. Let's 
So before you dip again, just make sure you wipe off, wipe off your brush. A few purpley white flicks here and there. Okay. And then I'm going to do some yellow ones. And I'll need the white again, because obviously, just clean that up. I want the yellow ones to have a bit of kick as well. So for this, I won't use transparent white. I'll use some a bright cadmium. So this is cadmium yellow, medium. If you want them paler, you could. Actually, it's got a bit paler than that. That's too bright, too orange. What's this one? Cadmium that's medium as well. I want a lighter version. So I'm going to go with. A light yellow, that's better. So same thing, dip in, dip in, and then start to apply a few spots of this. Let's break up where I've put some of those grasses. Start to get the feeling of it being a kind of a meadow. I had a few of these yellow spots into this area. Being careful not to make them all in the same shape or the same place. More yellow, a bit more white. Just a few of these down, down in this area where it's quite dark. Just to break up some of these areas where we've got a lot of masking. <clears throat> and they don't really go to the edge of the picture. If I just put a bit of color over the end, kind of disguises that the masking was coming from there. So I'm gonna clean that brush off now and get some blue, some cerulean blue. And we'll do the white thing again, because that helps to uh, Clean the white off. <clears throat> so, blue, 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 blue. Actually, I've got some turquoise here. Let's go with that. Go and get it open. A bit lighter turquoise. Let's use some teal. Got a nice teal colour here. I don't suppose it really matters what colour flowers we have, just as long as we get a nice bright bit of colour. I'm going to dip into the white again, into the teal. I'll get a good hit of colour. And then I'm going to, over this side, have some nice bluer spots of colour. some of those into those oranges because that'd be quite nice. Break that up. Just a couple of these up into this area.
within these grasses. couple down here, slightly stronger. Turn the brush off. I've actually noticed I've got a piece of grass up here that I've not put in yet, so I'm just going to re-wet that, drop in a bit of that golden colour. <clears throat> now, Put a few slightly darker grasses now to enhance this forehand at uh, the foreground area. Put the lids back on those colours. So I might use some Payne's grey and some yellow. A bit of Payne's grey there. And I'll put some yellow with it. So it's pretty a pretty dark um, dark green is really what I'm after, and very dry, so not too much moisture in it. Just a little bit of moisture, just to mix the paint. And I'm going to use this just to cut in some darker grasses. A little bit more moisture, it's a bit dry. So a few shapes here and there to break up. Some of these foreground areas. Yellow. Maybe make some prelude type shapes. Wiggle in the brush. It's darker in there, I feel. <clears throat> so you want the um, the foreground to be sort of a a, um, a kind of organized mess in a way. You don't want it to be too neat, but equally it's got to sort of try and suggest foliage and that kind of, not in too an ordered fashion. It's kind of trying to find that fine line between being 
too abstract and not abstract enough. <clears throat> and obviously that's a very personal, personal choice, but it's got to have enough in it to register as being close to us. Maybe just the odd throng that's a bit darker coming up there. Have a few darker ones of those, I think. But it just needs that. Bits here and there. It's a bit too light. Okay, let's just have a look. And then just finally, I think I will have just the odd tiny flick of uh, actually use a bit of white and a bit of yellow. The white. Let's do that first. Stiffer brush. Just a small stiff brush. Just going to dip into some white. A bit of moisture in it just to get it moving. Just want a few more flecks of of white within the. within these areas. Give it sort of a haze. Add a bit of texture to the foreground. Okay, I think that will probably probably do.